we get back into the study on transfers. Last week, we started by looking at transfer. And the, the reason why God wants us to look at it in the devotional of this month is because there is a transfer of wealth happening. Transfer of wealth has been continuous, all right, from the sinners to the saints. But there are times that God brings like a ma mighty move of the Spirit. And during that time, there is a massive movement, all right, of things from the end of the sinners to the end of the saints. And God is doing that again, all right? He's doing that again. One of the ways that God does it is by changing a sinner that controls an industry. He gets him born again. Another way is by making a believer to set up something. It will lead that believer to set it up. And then God will shift the market to that person. God is doing it. And nobody can stop him. <laughs> And we are in that season again on the earth. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, we are looking at um, transfers. And today we are looking at houses that we have not built. These are biblical promises. You know, sometimes we try to explain them away in our modernization of the work of a Christian to try and make it less miraculous so we expect less miraculous so we can work harder which is very important because some Christians are really just lazy. Just lazy. They are not going to do anything. They just want to sit down and Dan Goodes should just transfer all this money to their account. <laughs> there are some Christians that think like that. You know? But you see, the, the fact that there are people who are like that doesn't mean that God is still not doing the miracles of transfer wealth. He's still doing it. And I want you to position an expectant. Yes, you work hard. You put your energy into whatever you're doing. You put in excellence. You, you I mean, receive strategies from the Lord, wisdom from the Lord to apply. But at the same time, you must expect what God has said. Deuteronomy in chapter 6, verse 10, he said, It shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee out, brought you into the land which he swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities, which thou buildest not. Then verse 11, which is really where we're going. And houses full of all good things, which thou feed, filled not. And wells digged, which thou digged not. <laughs> King James is tough to read. Vineyards and olive trees, which thou plantest not. When thou shalt have eaten and be full, beware lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him, and shalt swear by his name. Now, he's saying, don't forget God, because God is going to do this kind of stuff for you. And when he does it, don't forget him. You understand? Don't begin to have... Uh, some other kind of thinking. Get into the right things. You see, God is going to bring some of us to some unusual wealth. We should understand why he's doing it. He's not doing it just to make you a rich person, a multimillionaire. He's doing it because he needs you to commit to financing kingdom. You understand? To financing kingdom. I mean, these things we're talking about, the message of intimacy, the infrastructure that will carry the message, the system that will carry the message... They all have to be financed. And God wants to use you to do that. God wants to raise you financially, empower you. But you have to commit. You have to commit. You have to stay in the place of commitment. You understand? It's, it's, it's not saying bring your head and no, no, no. It's just saying put your commitment there. Listen, I found this out. If God blesses you with 10,000 and you cannot take 1,000 out to pay a tithe, if God blesses you one million, it will be tough to bring out a hundred thousand. That's how it works. Oh, when, when I make when I begin to make a million per month, I, I will pay my tithe. No, if you cannot pay tithe out of ten thousand, you won't pay out of a, one million, because it's 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 a habit. When you build the habit of doing it, you do it. When you when you get yourself committed into kingdom, you plug yourself in. God says this one: if I put. 100 million in her hands, I can ask for 20, I can ask for 30 if I want, and I know she won't refuse me, or I know he won't refuse me. You know, it's, it's more of what God demands. Am I willing to commit? Once I'm willing, 
There is nothing that God cannot do through you and to you and for you. Now read the devotional. We have come to another season where there will occur massive transfer of wealth and things from the hands and territories of the wicked to the hands and territories of the saints of the living God. There will be the transfer of wealth and it will be literal and by the market and platform. Uh, it will be literal and it will be by market and platform shifts. Like when the Spirit of God came upon David and the Spirit departed from King Saul. King Saul also got a tormenting spirit and a spirit of error that made him to keep losing to David until he died. And David reigned as king in his place. We will see these in these last days like we have never seen it before. Saints will be led to set up businesses and product lines in areas where some household names have controlled for years. And grace will be given to the household names. Sorry, grace will disappear from the household names until the businesses, services, and products of the saints will become the new household names that will rule, reign, dominate their various industries for many years to come. And God is doing that. The example is very clear. Look at David. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, if you read it, in verse 13 particularly, the Bible says, when Samuel anointed David, I think I should read it. 1 Samuel in chapter 16. That's what is happening in these days. So, so it's really happening. Verse 13 says, Then Samuel took the horn of Hoyle and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Verse 14. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. So the Spirit of the Lord was on Saul. Even though God had rejected him, but God still kept his because somebody had to keep leading the people. And God had to keep his spirit on that person, even though he has rejected the person. But as soon as God found a replacement, God put the spirit on David and the spirit departed from Saul immediately. All right. Then the Bible said, an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. So what is God doing? God is going to lead you to set up something. And then those people who have dominated that industry for years, the grace of success that they are enjoying will be removed because some of them are wicked people. You don't know that they look like they are good people, but they are doing so many wickedness. All right? Grace will be removed from them. The reason why some... You see, when somebody sets up something that people need, the person will excel because God has already put, you know, his word of command that we should dominate the earth and replenish it. So if you are contributing to dominating the earth and replenishing, replenishing the earth, there is the word of God that is backing you up. That's why they are succeeding. The moment God leads you to set up something there and you set it up according to God's lead, you know that you're just um, doing some things out of the wild, but you set it up according to God's will, grace will leave them. They will begin to commit blunders, errors, and all that. And then your own will keep increasing and keep increasing until you take over. And you become a stakeholder in that industry. In some cases, God is just going to shift the market to your favor. God will keep them, but God will shift the market to your favor and you become a stakeholder. In some cases, they are going to go down and be totally removed. Why? There is a transfer of wealth. And who are the ones that God is giving this? Those who are committed to kingdom agendas. That's it. His commitment. God is not giving us wealth so that we can show off like unbelievers. No. He's not giving us wealth so we can, you know, do all those things that they do. No. He wants us to enjoy good things. That's his will. The Bible said he has given us all things richly to enjoy. But he's given us wealth primarily to advance the kingdom. To advance the kingdom. There are things that we have to do in these last days. And it takes money to do them. It takes money to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. It takes money to push some things to happen. It takes money to organize fantastic and successful and excellent meetings where you reach people and bring them into, into the fullness of Christ. You understand? It takes that. <clears throat> some of the missions we have done to some African countries, oh my God, those missions are transformational for pastors, for ministers. I mean, they are so transformational. If we didn't have money, there was no way we could do them. 
There was no way we could put them together. There was one, there was one minister's conference we had in Kenya, Nairobi, where we had over 800 pastors in that one meeting. <clears throat> and that meeting, we didn't print any flyer. We just mobilized certain <clears throat> sorry, key uh, uh, ministers who are in the ministerial circles there, and they did some things, communicated with people, held some small, small meetings, which we paid for. And 800 people gathered. No flyer, no announcement or radio, nothing. But God is looking for people who are interested in kingdom advancement, making things happen. Making things happen. So there is going to be this transfer. The spirit is, in fact, it's not it's coming. It has, it has come upon you. And those people are going to lose the spirit. They are going to lose the grace. And you are going to rise. They are going to go down. Bible says promotion does not come from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. It comes from God. He said he is judge. He pulls down one to lift up another. That's the operation. And God is the judge. So you may think somebody is good, but God is the judge. God knows what they are doing. God understands what they are saying. Some people, God had told them, come and do this. And they are rebellious and they are rebelling. You know, so God is going to replace them with those who are willing. There is a massive transfer of wealth in the days we live in. This transfer of wealth also includes inheriting houses and cities that we have not built. This promise is still relevant in these last days. Children of God will possess houses they have not built through buying them at very cheap prices and receiving them as gifts. There will be many real estate companies which are set up to buy up properties that people would dispose of for quick cash at very ridiculous prices. I believe some believers should team up to set up real estate farms that are into buying properties that need to be sold at very, very pressing moments for certain people. Because God is going to pull the wicked into some very dangerous situations and they would get those properties out to you. And you will be like, wow, wow. I never knew. I never knew. All right? So many things are going to happen that way. There is a transfer we should position for this harvest. I know sometimes some people are very general hearted. They love human beings. So why would somebody lose their property and we are the ones buying it? I know you are very, 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 very holy and you love people more than God. But please let God be judge. This is what God is doing. And you need to be a part of it. You need to be a part of it. People should set up real estate companies that are buying. You buy. You keep buying it out. All right? Some of it you are going to buy at correct prices, but you are just going to have the grace to be able to buy stuff. The funds will just be there. Just buy and buy and buy. And then God's hand will be there to make it happen. Okay? We are in this season now. He said, houses you've not built, cities you've not built, fill with every good. He said, I'll give them to you. We should believe these promises. They are still happening. God will make some people to give you houses for free. Some, some will give it to you at a price that you'll be wondering, ah, why is he selling it at this price? Because something is happening. There's a transfer. A house that's supposed to go for 100 million. The person will just say, my friend, if you have 30 million, just bring it. I'm okay. So why are you doing that? I just want to get rid of all these ones that I've gathered here. And some of them, they gathered it with unclean money. They did all kind of terrible things. You know? And at some point, the visitation of God's judgment will come on them. And they will need to do those kind of actions. Get ready, saints. Be positioned. Like mama, my wife used to say, be positioned. Because it's going to happen. Get ready. Get ready. Let's pray. Pray and say, Father, I believe and I accept the harvest of houses, properties, real estate that have not built, that have not done anything, but they are blessing me with in this transfer of wealth. I believe in it, I position for it, and I receive in the name of Jesus. Thank you for doing what only you can do. I receive grace to position accurately for this transfer of wealth that you are doing in these last days. 
Let your spirit come upon me like it came upon David. And let your spirit depart from all evil competition in the name of Jesus. Pray in the Holy Ghost of Babu Godufri Yambaskana. Rida Paskotufia Mezinganga Skotoski Dipoti. Mabusi and Nagarech Kotufia Paskananda. Rakuskini and Deskotupi Kanankali Kotskotufia Mendanga. Mendanga, Mendanga, Mendanga. Pokorianda Kolusko. Orede Shifia Piske Takana Kaluskoni. Arasho Fia Pesinando. Ogise Se Kito Koma Pima Namba. Manamba Pakatufre Vigabuskoyas Yasganando. In the name of Jesus Christ, we give God the praise. Thank you, Father. We go straight into our confessions as we round up tonight, I mean this morning, all right? God is faithful, he's awesome and glorious. I decree upon you that this season of transfer of wealth, the Lord positions you for transfer in the name of Jesus. There's some new names that will rise in the banking industry, and you'll be one of those. New investors, yes, you'll be one of those. They're going to rise in every field of life, in technology, in engineering. You'll be one of those. Investors now. There are new names that are going to rise as creators, all right? Creative minds that are pioneering new fields, that are pioneering already established fields. God has positioned you. Receive grace in the name of Jesus. God will drop in your spirit the next unusual idea that will set the pace in that new industry, in that already established industry, and move the market to your side, move the market in your favor. In the name of Jesus, God will make you the new name that is in the front page of the newspapers for good in that industry. God will set you as a stakeholder. In the name of Jesus, the hand of the Lord is upon you. For this transfer in the name of Jesus. I declare the Lord positions you in the name of Jesus. The Lord positions you in the name of Jesus. Oh God, please, in your infinite mercy, choose this your people as one of those that you are positioning for this mighty transfer of wealth. Thank you for using them to advance the kingdom. Thank you for using them to finance kingdom advancement in all dimensions. Thank you for putting in them passion, heart desire, you know, strong passion to see your kingdom established in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you for positioning them. Thank you for shifting them into that place of accurate positioning for triumphant victories and triumphant reigning in their industries of calling, talent, gift, and capacity in the name of Jesus. I declare you blessed to prosper, to do well, to harvest, to take the transfer of wealth in the name of Jesus. Look, it doesn't matter what position you're in now. You will see some rapid turn around, and before you know it, you're there. You're just there. And everybody's wondering, how did you do it? Because God saw your heart. God saw your willingness, all right? And God said, yes, this one I can use. This one I can move through. And that's what God is doing. You're blessed in the name of Jesus. You're blessed. You're blessed. Say with me, say in the name of Jesus. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. The old things have passed away. All things are new. I'm a brand new person. I'm a brand new man. In the name of Jesus. I've been washed with the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, my organs, my systems, my body, my bones, my cells, my DNA, my genes cannot be corrupted, deformed or defiled by any force, disease, vaccination. In the name of Jesus, I declare the blood of Jesus flows in my blood. Therefore, today, I say it in faith that all negative experiences and diseases attached to the old bloodline have been purged out of my life and my lineage. The covenant in the blood of Jesus is the only covenant that speaks in my life. 
Christ is my foundation. No other foundation speaks in my life and in my lineage but Christ. I have been redeemed from the curse. Therefore, I cannot be cursed. I am the blessed. And my blessing cannot be reversed. In the name of Jesus, I declare today, I am born of God. God is love. I am love. And the love of God is poured into my heart by the Holy Spirit. So I walk in love. I have the nature of righteousness and true holiness. So I walk in purity and uprightness. I am meek and lowly in heart. I have rest in my soul. I have the spirit of Christ's humility. I'm submissive to God, his will, and his counsel at all times. And so he exalts me for he lifts up the humble. And I enjoy abundance of grace for he gives grace to the humble. I'm daily loaded with special benefits from the Lord. In the name of Jesus, I declare the blessing of Abraham is on my life. I am blessed, empowered to prosper, to go forward, and to do very well. I have the power to get wealth. And that power brings wealth to me. Opportunities, open doors, connections for wealth. I've flooded my life in the name of Jesus. I declare today, by the stripes of Jesus, I have been healed. I'm surrounded with favor as a shield. I'm highly favored. The hand of the Lord is strong in my life. I walk in the fullness of God. In the name of Jesus. The Lord keeps me and all that are mine. In a secret place. Under his shadow. No evil can befall us. No plague can come near our dwelling. In the name of Jesus. We shall live and not die. To declare the glory of God in the land of the living. My home is blessed. My children are blessed. I am head and not tail. I am God's elect. God's chosen. God's beloved. And because he loves me. <laughs> I am victorious today. I am triumphant today. I overcome all. For greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. In the name of Jesus, the spirit, power, and anointing of the new move of God is on my life. Therefore, I manifest the fullness of Christ's character. Thinking what Jesus would think. Saying what Jesus would say. And doing what Jesus would do. In all situations, I manifest the fullness of Christ's power. Healing the sick. Casting out devils, raising the dead, doing the works of Jesus and the greater works. I manifest the fullness of Christ's wisdom in all places of calling, assignment, engagement, skills. I do exploits. I achieve mighty things. I create solutions in the name of Jesus. I manifest the fullness of Christ's presence. Everywhere I am, the presence of God has soaked the place. Sinners have come to Christ. The sick have been healed. Demons fled. The powers of hell have been seized. And the glory of God covers the earth as waters covers the sea. In Jesus' name, amen. Praying the Holy Ghost that you cope in Andesha. Varukaskia dabita, Nagala, Tapesco dufana, Reta Pakalus Sufian Biscuit dukaya, Dens.
Pastor Paul Alashore every Sunday, 9 a.m., at Elohim's Tabernacle International. Lucky.